Hey, good morning everyone. Um, sun's still coming up here. I have a dog and a cat in here with me. So, um, I, this is day eight of 21 days to releasing fear of the future. And the topic, the request was fear of a health event, um, fear that I won't live well in retirement and can't keep my weight off. So, um, the first thing that I would say is, um, Carrying extra weight is a—it's a complex issue for many of us. In in psychosomatics, weight is protection. If you think about it, you're literally insulating yourself and keeping yourself safe. It's—it's it's along the lines of you know when they talk about hoarding, people are insulating themselves. And we live in a culture that um, has—it's—it's. It's, being overweight or carrying excess weight is an acceptable form of prejudice in our culture, which is really unfortunate because, um, and, and, and there's fat shaming and all of that that goes on like that's okay to do that. Because the perception is that people lack willpower, they're not, um, they're unable to um, get off the couch, uh, put the fork down, all the stuff that you hear about that. but. So when you add that pressure to, hey, I've lost weight, I wanna keep it off now, you live in a state of what's called anticipatory stress of, oh my God, like what if the weight comes back on? Particularly if you've lost weight and it's come back on again, we, we start to not trust ourselves and not believe that we can keep the weight off. And it actually, it was interesting, I was working with um, a client yesterday about this and she's in a state right now where the urge is gone to overeat but she has that anticipatory stress of oh god you know but I know I don't trust myself it's it's gonna come back on so we talked about this idea of in in the moment it's it's giving yourself kudos for the wins like it's huge to have lost the weight and just and it's a practice it's a practice but to to sort of interrupt the pattern of anticipatory stress that oh god what if the weight comes back on you just practice and it can be in an instant and a moment to go oh but right now it's okay just in this moment like tuning into the moment living in the moment to go it's okay right now right now it's not there because you're, you're bypassing the, the brain to the anticipatory stress of, oh, oh my God, I'm going to put the weight back on. So you want to interrupt those thoughts of, oh, because that anticipatory stress of the weight's going to come back on. Okay, that may happen, but right now, right in this moment, it's okay. It's okay. And you could tap on, that, that might happen. It's happened before. But what if it doesn't have to happen? And right here, right now, it's okay. Um, and then the, the anticipation, uh, there's grace, the anticipation of a health event. I'm in the midst of a health event myself right now. Um, I had all these um, really pretty cool tests on the check what's called markers. And I've, um, what am I, 19, 19 days into a, a candida cleanse. And mine's been very severe, and the cleanse, the 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 cleanse has been, oh my god, like so crazy, and I feel like I've just turned a corner with the cleanse, like the the die off and all that is completely different. So, um, and and you can feel discouraged. I know this for myself when you're like, God, I'm doing this and I'm not seeing a change, but it's like I tap through that. So for, you know, you could tap through, God, I have this fear that I'm going to have a health event and then I'm not going to be able to enjoy retirement. I'm afraid that the weight's going to come back on. And a couple things is mental noting, which is a mindfulness meditation technique, is a fabulous technique to just do the, um, like if you're in that anticipation of, oh God, I could have a, a bad health event, especially if I don't keep the weight off to go like to, you know, um, whatever the word is, judging, fearful, you name what's going on for you. Um, I, I did this once, I've told this story on here before. I, one day I was hiking and I noticed the, the mind frick, you know, I call it the bully in my brain was like just intense. 
and I just stopped, paused, and went abusing, and I actually started to laugh because it completely bypassed and interrupted that pattern. Um, it, I should say it just interrupted. It's kind of, um, it interrupted the pattern of, oh my God, the incessant quelling of bleh, what's going on there. So that's just a couple things is practice when you catch yourself in that anticipatory stress of, oh God, I'm afraid I'm gonna have a health event and I'm not gonna be able to enjoy retirement. That is us living in anticipatory, anticipatory stress, stress, something that hasn't even happened yet. But we're creating it in our mind and you just wanna keep interrupting that thought pattern. And then, <clears throat> um, and the bridging statements are great, so let's tap. And thanks for the post. For whatever reason, <clears throat> when I'm, my cat's bumping this, when I do these, I have to go back in and put the title back in, even if I tag someone on it. So um, thanks for the um, the topic, Camille, and I'll, if you're not post tag now, I'll re-tag you after that. So start on the karate chop. Even though I'm living in anticipatory stress, What if I have a health event? What if the weight comes back on? And I can't live well in retirement. I choose to acknowledge these feelings now. Even though I'm starting to see I'm living in anticipatory stress, fearful of a health event, fearful of putting the weight back on. I choose to acknowledge these feelings now. Even though I'm in a pattern of anticipatory stress, The bully in my brain loves to fill my head with what could happen. And it's never good. I'm open to seeing this differently now. I'm in anticipatory stress. of this bad thing happening. Maybe it's happened before. So then I have history and evidence to tell me it could happen again. But couldn't it also be possible that it doesn't happen again. It doesn't have to happen again. Especially if I catch myself in my anticipatory stress and I interrupt it, What if I can change what's possible for me? And what if my past doesn't equal my present, doesn't equal my future? I'm having an event happen right now. anticipating the worst. And I can't stop these thoughts. They just fire off on their own. And that would be too much pressure anyway 
to think I've got to stop these thoughts. But I can interrupt them. And what if the more I interrupt them, over time, I start to feel them shifting. What if the anticipatory stress of what could happen feels less and less true? And then I start to notice, ah, I'm feeling better. Something's shifting for me. I'm not so afraid of the future. In fact, I have some positive thoughts leaking in. And maybe even now, I get those moments of knowing that all is well and it's going to be okay and I've got this and then I get guidance and direction because it has the space to come through now that helps me on this journey so that I can keep my health intact and do whatever I need to do as the inspirations come. So I take inspired action And I notice I feel so much better. And I'm less afraid and more hopeful as I keep taking those steps that come to me through inspiration. on ways to settle myself in and feel grounded in a new reality that's anticipating the best and whole new possibilities. So take a breath. Hey, Marette. Happy to see you here. So if you found that helpful, go back and tap on it as many times as you need to. And again, it's, it's the little steps. Hey, Trish, it's those little steps. Like, it's not, like I always say, sometimes I think even tapping gets this rap of tap three times and my, you know, the clouds are gonna part, the angels are gonna start to sing and life is forever changed. My journey, I've had clients that have had those experiences in the moment about something profound, but there's still all this other stuff. And, and, and in my own experience too, it's like, oh, okay, there I am. I'm in, in anticipatory stress. My, the bully, I call it the bully, the bully in your brain loves to fill us up and anticipate the worst case scenario. So you can go to tap. Thank you so much, Marty. You're, oh, thanks, Marette. It's so great to have you here live and you too, Trish. You're so welcome. So it's like, oh, right, I'm anticipating the worst. And I've been doing this thing lately. When I catch that voice, I'm like, mm-mm. I mean, I tell it to, to F off, and I'm like, oh, my God. And sometimes I'm like, now I've noticed that softening. And I'm like, thank you for sharing. Or you may go, leave me. Um, and that's an interruption. And even the mindfulness, like mental noting is like, oh, 
anticipating, you know, whatever, you can just use a word, fearful, stressful, um, it interrupts the pattern. And it was liberating to me and so relieving to realize I cannot stop my thoughts, but I can interrupt them because I was doubling down on pressure on myself, believing that I could somehow or had to stop my thoughts. You can't. They just fire off. But when you catch them and interrupt them, that's what starts to change it over time for you. So um, great to have you ladies here live. And thanks for the topic, Camille. And I'll make sure you're tagged on this because I probably went away. Seems to be doing that every day. And this will also be posted on YouTube. And then we'll see you back here tomorrow, Friday for day nine, and then you have your weekends free. Bye, Marette. Bye, Trish. Take good care.